And so we're going to talk some a little bit about some of the less invasive options as well. Uh, what you see on the left is the NeuroPACE device, which is a neurostimulation device. Um, uh, it's similar to a defibrillator in the heart. Uh, on the top right, you can see that's a uh, focused ultrasound. That's a, a newer technology that actually doesn't involve any kind of incision on the scalp. Um, and then the bottom right is a uh, laser ablation. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about each of those. And the neuropace and the laser ablation are things that we do here at UCI very commonly. Um, and I understand that the, with focused ultrasound, we should be getting that when we get our new hospital in the next few years. So we'll talk a little bit about that newer technology. So with regards to neuromodulation, we have three devices that we use. There's responsive neurostimulation, deep brain stimulation, and vagus nerve stimulation. So with responsive neurostimulation, as I mentioned before, if you imagine that a, a patient, we, we do all the invasive monitoring and we see that the patient has seizures and let's say their language area are very close to one another. Well, obviously, if we remove that area, they'll have a language problem. And you know that, that's a functional deficit that we obviously never want to give our patients. Up until about 2013, before that time, we had no options available for those patients. So we would tell them, you know, unfortunately, we can't do anything to treat this. But thankfully, since the time in the development of responsive neurostimulation, we've actually been able to really help this very difficult and challenging group of patients. So the way that it works is that we implant those electrodes onto the area where we know seizures are coming from. And then we also implant the battery into the skull as well. And the device is constantly listening for seizures. This is a true closed loop system in that it's listening for seizures. And as you can see here, when it sees that a seizure is developing, it'll send a electro electrical stimulation and that can either abort or shorten the seizure. And uh, really it's become a, a major, major uh, help for us because again, as I mentioned prior to this, we had no real options available for patients with this type of epilepsy. This was a paper that we wrote a, a couple of years back looking at um, our experience using the robot as well as the NeuroPACE device. And we've done it now on over 25 patients and we've had really great success with that. Now I'm gonna talk about deep brain stimulation. And interestingly, even though it's a very different stimulation pattern, a different area that we're stimulating, the long-term outcomes have show, been shown to be very similar. And so with this device, we're actually targeting the anterior nucleus of the thalamus. So it's a very specific area. And what you see here is this, this is important to look at because um, over time you see that the seizure reduction in patients actually improves. So we go from 50% reduction in the first year all the way up to 70%. We know that at around nine years, we actually see about 75% reduction in seizures by about 50%. Now with all the neuromodulatory devices, I forgot, I didn't mention this earlier, but one of the important things to think about is that we're not, our goal is not necessarily to make patients seizure free. Our goal is to reduce the seizure burden, uh, especially if we can get it below 50% of what their baseline is. Um, because of the type of the nature of the disease and, and because of the type of stimulations we're doing, it's very rare that we get patients who become seizure free with this type of device. Although we have been uh, fortunate to have some patients actually develop that. And then the last option is vagus nerve stimulation. This is our oldest device. We've had this for about 30 years. Um, we basically implant a generator in the left chest wall and then uh, place a small lead over the vagus nerve. <clears throat> again, in the left uh, neck. Uh, with this type of device, we, we tell patients that about 50% of patients get a 50% reduction in their seizures. And so again, we don't fully understand how these devices work, but we do know that um, it is better than medication because we know that once you fail two or three medications, the likelihood of becoming seizure-free with medication alone pretty much goes down to zero. Um, laser ablation is another very exciting and uh, novel treatment that we have available to us in epilepsy surgery. This is an actual patient that we did at UCI. And what you see here is that there's essentially a pinhole opening that we have. Um, when, we, when we remove it, we just put one staple in that hole and that's actually how we close that, that incision. Really the benefit here is that it's minimally invasive. Uh, it it um, 
it requires us to go to the MRI machine because it actually is performing that ablation in real time. We use the MRI as an actual um, uh, real time observation of the, the ablation. And then one of the very nice parts of it is that we can actually get to very deep parts of the brain and uh, avoid damaging any of that collateral tissue, which is very important, um, especially when I show you some of these lesions that we've, we've treated. So what you can see here on the left is mesial temporal sclerosis. So with that procedure, we actually place the laser fiber from a posterior approach. And then we go right down the barrel of the hippocampus and the amygdala, and we can perform a very nice uh, oblong type ablation, usually in the range of three to four centimeters. The, the middle uh, graphic you see is a perinodular heterotopia. And just like you can imagine, to get to that point um, with open surgery does create a lot more collateral damage to the brain, to the surrounding tissue. And, uh, and so by doing it this way with a very small fiber, we can address these, these areas without actually doing open surgery and, and potentially injuring normal tissue. And the, what you see on the right there, that to me is the ideal use for this uh, laser ablation. So hypothalamic heterotopias are very difficult to treat. Um, if you imagine that a, uh, a basketball, and if you imagine that right in the center of that basketball is a small tic-tac, that is like the, the, it's very similar to how a hypothalamic heterotopia works in that, you know, open surgery requires us to traverse essentially the entirety of the brain from above to get down to that area. And any injury to the hypothalamus can cause significant and long-term uh, endocrine disorders. Whereas if you look here, you can see that with this very small fiber, we can get all the way down to that hypothalamus and treat that area without causing any collateral damage. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.